what's up there dude, it's first. Today I want to do a quick video and show you how the EGR system works on the car and also what you can do to diagnose and uh, fix any problems with all the different components within the system. Before we go on to the engine and uh, me showing you where all the different components of the EGR system are, let's quickly go over what uh, some of the EGR systems that are out on different makes and models today and what EGR does and how it works. Uh, basically EGR stands for exhaust gas recirculation. What that means is that your EGR system takes some of the exhaust gas that's coming out of your combustion chamber and then recycles that back through the intake manifold and then your engine again. Uh, by doing this, by taking the already hot exhaust gas and recycling it through the engine, it reduces the combustion temperature and as a result, it reduces NOx, which is a gas that your car gets tested for when you go in for your emissions test. Also by reducing the combustion temperature, this helps the engine run a lot smoother at higher RPMs. Now let's start with this very basic uh, EGR system. As you can see, there's a vacuum operated EGR valve. There's actually a diaphragm here. And as your RPM increases and as the, your throttle plate opens and air rushes in through your intake, the vacuum that's inside this uh, vacuum line that runs to your EGR valve all the air that's rushing past this, this port for this vacuum line makes this, the, the vacuum increase in this circuit between here and the diaphragm and by that it pulls up on your EGR valve and then you get exhaust gases passing through these, this port that's uh, usually part of your intake or your throttle body and then reintroduces exhaust gas back into your intake then your engine and out again through the exhaust pipe. Now, knowing myself later on when I'm showing this on the car, I'm going to say that when your throttle plate opens and, your, and the vacuum inside your intake manifold increases, it's, that's what's going to cause this valve to go up. But actually, you know, when your throttle plate opens, the vacuum decreases in inside your intake manifold, but the vacuum that's inside this vacuum line increases as a result of that because all that air, again, all that fresh air is going to start rushing by this port here and then it's going to cause a vacuum and this, uh, this line, and that's what's going to pull up on the diaphragm and your EGR valve. Now if your car is equipped with this EGR system and you're having problem with, uh, if you're suspecting you're having problem with your EGR, uh, some of the problem areas are obviously going to be this vacuum line. Uh, they get old and brittle and they start developing tears. Your EGR valve or the diaphragm actually itself, it could uh, wear out or get damaged or this passageway, which is another common area, the passageway between your EGR valve and your intake or throttle body could get clogged up by carbon buildup. Now on this graph, this is very straightforward, but on different makes and models, the passage uh, between your EGR valve and your intake could be pretty extensive. You know, it could involve different runners with different intake, uh, your, for your intake runners. It could, you know, go wind through your intake body, intake uh, manifold. So you need to be thorough when you're inspecting the, the passageway between your EGR valve and your intake manifold. Obviously this, uh, this pipe from your exhaust pipe uh, could also be uh, clogged up by carbon buildup. So that's another area you need to check. And later on I'll be showing you all the different uh, you know, parts of the EGR system on the car and how to, how to test and inspect them more thoroughly. Okay. Let's skip ahead a little bit and go to an electric EGR system. In this system your EGR valve is operated by a stepper motor and it's controlled, and the stepper motor is controlled by ECU. Now your ECU takes into effect all the different readings from uh, all your different sensors, like your MAF, MAP, throttle position sensor, and according to those readings, it positions the valve, uh, you know, up to, I've read, up to 50 different positions. Now, this is a very efficient way of running an EGR system, but uh, I would assume this is uh, probably on the more expensive side to set up uh, to get an EGR valve that's electronically op operated by a stepper motor. But uh, you probably see this on uh, newer makes and models anyway. But uh, as far as what kind of problems you could develop with this system, again, same similar problems. This passageway could get clogged up from your EGR valve to your intake. This pipe from your exhaust manifold, your exhaust uh, pipe could get clogged by carbon buildup. But on this system, obviously, you don't have a vacuum line, so you don't have to worry about that. And if you ever develop a problem with the stepper motor uh, EGR valve itself, I would assume, I'm not very experienced with this system, but I would assume you would probably get a check engine light, which would make uh, diagnosing a problem with your stepper motor 
somewhat easier. Now let's go on to the next EGR system and uh, this EGR system is what I have on my uh, Ford Mustang and uh, that's what we'll be going over in a, in a little while. And as you can see in this system you, ha you do have a vacuum operated EGR valve but this EGR valve is not directly connected to your intake or your throttle body but rather uh, it's connected to an EGR vacuum solenoid or an EGR vacuum regulator. Basically this, uh, this EGR vacuum solenoid is controlled by your ECU Similar in a similar fashion that uh, with an electrical stepper motor EGR valve, the ECU takes into effect all the different re readings from your uh, different uh, sensors, and then it sends a signal to your EGR vacuum solenoid, and that solenoid regulates the amount of vacuum that comes from your intake to your EGR valve. I would assume this is a more efficient way of running an EGR system than the first system, but rather uh, at the same time a somewhat cheaper way than the. EGR valve but that was electronically controlled with a stepper motor. Now there is an addition to this system on the Ford Mustang we're going to be working on and I was assuming other uh, domestic vehicles as well which is an EGR valve pressure sensor or they call it I think the differential pressure feedback EGR but <laughs> I mean we're just going to call it the EGR valve pressure sensor uh, that just makes more sense to me. Uh, basically the sensor just uh, is connected to this pipe that comes out of your exhaust manifold or your exhaust pipe that goes up to your EGR valve by two vacuum lines and basically measures the, the amount of uh, exhaust gas that's going by and if it senses that the, you know, the gas is uh, not flowing at the correct rate then it sends a signal to your ECU and that's its uh, check engine light for uh, low EGR flow or I believe the code for that. P0401 or insufficient EGR flow. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that the system has uh, insufficient EGR flow. Sometimes the sensor goes bad or one of these uh, vacuum lines gets damaged and then you get a wrong signal sent to your ECU. But uh, again I'll show you in a little bit how to test this, uh, this system. And as far as what kind of problems could rise in a setup like this, very similar problems. Carbon build up here, the passageway from your EGR valve to your intake. In addition to that though, you have an extra vacuum line that you need to take, uh, take a look at and the EGR vacuum solenoid itself could be go bad. Now, some of you might be thinking that, uh, you know, what if a sensor, one of these sensors or the ECU itself goes bad? Well, generally speaking, you're, if, you know, if you have a problem with one of these sensors, you'll have other symptoms. Same with the ECU. It's very rare that the ECU goes bad and the only thing it affects is the, you know, a check engine like for your EGR. Uh, it's usually a lot more symptoms than that. What you could have though is a problem with one of the connectors between your EGR vacuum solenoid and the ECU and same thing on the electrical EGR valve. Uh, you know the connectors could go bad or the wiring might be damaged so that's something you want to keep in mind. Okay now let's get on to actually showing you how each uh, different components looks like uh, on the car. Uh, this guy right here as some of you may know this is the EGR valve and this is the vacuum line that controls the valve or the, the diaphragm that's inside here. This, uh, this vacuum line, if you can follow it, it goes to your uh, EGR solenoid, which is this guy here. It's the electrical connector that goes to your ECU. And this EGR solenoid, as you can see, and as it's supposed to, has two vacuum lines going to it. This green one is the one that goes to the EGR valve, and the red one, it goes all the way around here and it goes to your uh, throttle body and that's where the vacuum source is. It uses the vacuum that's in the throttle body and then it regulates it and it operates the diaphragm that's inside your EGR valve here. 